What if you were asked to solve this equation? So let's try isolating the variable. It's a great method. But the problem is, in this case, we have two terms with our variable in it x squared in this term and x in this term. So which are we trying to isolate? Well, if we try and isolate this x, we could square root both sides, but we still have an x over here, so it's not truly isolated. Hmm. If we try to isolate this x, you know, we could shift things around, add 12 and divide by negative 7, but we still have an x over here. So again, it's not isolated. In this case, we can see that isolating the variable is not an effective tool. So let's try out our new factoring method with this one. Again, we'll start by rearranging to get the zero on the right side. We'll add 7x and add 12 to both sides, and we end up with x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals zero. Perfect. We have our zero on the right side. Step one, done. Next. Let's see if we can factor the left side. We see it's a trinomial. So what two numbers multiply to give 12 and add to give 7? Well, 3 and 4 would work. So we could write this as x plus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. And now it's time to consider what values of x would make this true. Well. If x was negative 3, then this term would end up being 0. So negative 3 is a solution. And what about this term? If x was negative 4, then this term would be 0. So negative 4 would also be a solution. So our conclusion, we have two solutions, negative 3 and negative 4. Just like any other solving problem from the past, we can always test our solution by plugging it into the original equation. So let's give it a try. If we plug in x equals negative 3, we get, well, negative 3 squared equals negative 7 times negative 3 minus 12. On the left, negative 3 squared is 9. And on the right, we have 21 minus 12. And 9 equals 9. Yeah, that's confirmed x equals negative 3 makes this true. If we tried the negative 4, we would have negative 4 squared equals negative 7 times negative 4 minus 12, or 16 on the left, and 28 minus 12 on the right. 16 equals 16. Again, confirm. So, tested and proven. These are, in fact, solid solutions. In this tutorial, we looked at a solving example where isolating the variable was not a good option. And so we tested our new method of solving by factoring. We rearranged so it had a zero on the right, then we factored the left side. Now knowing that zero times anything equals zero, we were able to zero in on a solution quite easily. Haha, <laughs> good dad pun. So, you have a new tool in your solving toolbox. So let's dive into examples to test this out further.